President Biden is in Minnesota tonight as he uh, tours the country to tout the benefits from his new infrastructure law. Here in Washington, though, there are new roadblocks uh, to the rest of the president's agenda that are unfolding right now. Let's discuss this and more with Mitch Landrieu. He was recently tapped by President Biden to oversee the implementation uh, of the infrastructure law. He's joining us now for his first interview since taking the job. He's the former mayor of New Orleans, uh, as many of our viewers will remember. Uh, mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Let's talk about what's going hey, on. The president right now in Minnesota touting the bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, but a lot of this funding will go to long-term projects, three years, five years, 10 years down the road. How long will it take until Americans feel the impact of all of this in their daily lives? Well, well, thanks for thanks for having me. As you, as you mentioned, the the president is in Minnesota today at, at Dakota County Technical College, where he's talking about new jobs for a new future uh, for working class Americans. And this morning, before he left, he was thrilled to be gone because this really is the picture of of what he wants America to become and the chances he wants to give to working class folks that are actually going to rebuild America because that's the only way that it's ever been done. You know, it's very interesting. For 50 years, we've been waiting to get this done. The last three or four presidents have tried, and President Biden and his team actually, uh, with the help of a bipartisan Congress, actually put us over the goal line. And so now we have an opportunity, as the president said, to rebuild the economy from the bottom up and the middle out. And that's really important because we're about transforming the economy so that we can compete and win the 21st century. There is some money that's gone out of the door as we speak. I talked to a number of governors and mayors this week. I talked to the National Governors Association infrastructure team today. There's $100 million in broadband money at a minimum for each state if it's applied for as we speak. There's also formula funding through the Department of Transportation. And of course, across other agencies, there's money that's available now. But as you said, we're about building the future of the country. It's a lot easier to tear down something and quicker than it is to build it. And I think the American public understands that. But when we get into the business of making sure that roads and bridges and lead pipes um, are changed and we create great paying jobs for that, Americans will see that benefit and they'll know that this was an investment in the long term future of our country. As you know, the uh, president backed away from the initial plan to pass infrastructure and the larger social spending bill in tandem. Now there's very little uh, indication that Senator Joe Manchin, for example, wants to move ahead with the broader social spending bill. Uh, how does President Biden get him on board when Manchin has major reservations about more, a lot more spending, for example? Well, you saw over the last couple of months a difficulty that um, the White House and Congress had um, in getting past the infrastructure bill, much less the Build Back Better plan. And they're going to continue to work on that. And I think the president has full confidence that at the end of the day, uh, the team on Capitol Hill will be there to put the second piece of this together. But in the meantime, on the infrastructure piece that the president asked uh, me to help him with, one of the things that's really important is that we now execute. And that's the much harder part of the job. And so when you think about this in terms of rebuilding the country, there has to be horizontal and vertical integration. In other words, the federal government, the mayors, um, the, the, the parish presidents, the tribal leaders all have to be on the same page, one team, one fight, making sure that the money gets to where it's supposed to go. Now, when the president was the vice president and he oversaw this for President Obama, he was really um, interested in making sure that the money got where it was supposed to go and make sure there's transparency and there's accountability, that we move fast, but we also move smart. And then as we build, we build back better. And what does the better mean? The better means that we really focus on climate, on equity, on, ra on racial equity as well, and make sure that we build back with American-made products. And that, of course, brings its own challenges as well. And so there's always a balance here in getting stuff in the ground and getting it coming out. And the American people need to be confident that when we build America back, that it's going to be better when we finish. Well, if that social spending bill is eventually passed, will you also be in charge of implementing that? I haven't been given any indication that that's true, and I'm not trying to take that job. You got a big if job. The president, if the president, oh, this one's big enough. 1.2 trillion. It's yeah. the biggest one that's been passed since Dwight Eisenhower, and you know I'm happy to help any way that I can. I'm sure you are. Uh, when you look at everything on uh, Democrats' plates uh, right now, uh, passing the National Defense Authorization Act ne needs to be passed. Avoiding a government shutdown—that's critical. Raising the debt limit also critical. Uh, will that push uh, uh, talks on this? Will that push the talks on the spending, the social spending bill into next year, because there's so much that needs to be done in December. Well, I think the members of Congress can do a lot of things at once, and I feel comfortable that the president is going to be able to get it done. Um, I think everybody hopes it doesn't get pushed into the next year, and they're going to push hard to get it all done, and I think it's within Congress's ambit to do it. So I'm looking forward to getting that done. 
Uh, but at, at the most important level, I'm interested in turning dirt and really changing the future of America for the better. The White House says uh, inflation, higher prices, gas prices, for example, supply chain issues will subside when we get the pandemic under control. Now with this new Omicron variant spreading, potentially not yet here in the United States as far as we know, but eventually it almost certainly will be here. Is it time to acknowledge these problems could be with us for a long time, that this is not transitory? Well, I'm not ready to say that. I don't think we know. There are lots of things in our lives, Wolf, that we can't control. I think I can speak on behalf of all the American people when I can say the last year and a half has been a lot. Um, and with the rise of this new virus, it just adds a level of uncertainty. But I feel um, very confident that the president and his team have been on everything they can within their power and control to make sure that this is transitory. And they have put a lot of plans in place to actually make that happen. I think that all of the experts and on TV today have said the best way for Americans to protect ourselves is to get vaccinated and to get boosted. That is the surest way to give us the tools that we need to move into where this, in fact, is transitory and we can get into building America, as we've talked about before. It certainly is critically important to get vaccinated and then get boosted, of course. Uh, Mitch Landrieu, good luck with your new job. Uh, it's a huge job. Thank I you, will Wolf. stay in close touch with you. Thanks for joining okay. us. Okay. Great to be with you. All right. Thank you.